Hi, I'm Dr. Joe Pettis. Once your prostate cancer has been diagnosed, I'm interested in three factors about the cancer. What was your pre-biopsy PSA? What did your prostate feel like on rectal exam? And what was the Gleason score assigned by the pathologist? We'll take a closer look at each of these factors. The PSA, or prostate-specific antigen, is a chemical secreted only by the prostate, and PSA levels can be elevated in prostate cancer. I often get the question, what is a normal PSA? The answer is that there is not a normal PSA. Prostate cancer can be detected at any PSA level, but generally speaking, the higher the PSA, the more likely prostate cancer will be detected. When a patient has prostate cancer, we can use it as a marker for how likely the cancer is to have grown through the capsule of the gland and how likely it is that the cancer has spread to the lymph nodes or other organs. When I do a rectal exam, I'm trying to estimate the size of the gland and to feel for nodules or masses. If there is a nodule or mass, how big is it? Does it seem to poke out of the prostate gland? Is the gland mobile or fixed? This is how we assign the initial stage of the prostate cancer. The normal prostate should feel rubbery, like the tip of your nose. Cancer is hard, like your forehead. By far, the most common clinical stage is T1C. That is a situation where the diagnosis was made strictly because the elevated PSA or rising PSA. In this situation, the prostate cancer cannot be felt on rectal exam. Clinical stages T1A and T1B are less common, but are usually a surprise to the doctor and the patient. This is when the prostate cancer is detected after a procedure called TERP, or transurethral resection of the prostate, which is where the prostate is hollowed out to relieve urinary obstruction from an enlarged prostate. The second most common case is when there's a prostate nodule that feels limited to the prostate gland. These are called clinical stage T2. They're further stratified by how much the prostate appears to be involved and whether it's limited to just one side or both. When the nodule seems to extend outside of the prostate gland, but it doesn't cause the prostate to feel fixed or cemented into place, we label that cancer as clinical stage T3. If the prostate seems fixed or very hard, then it is considered clinical stage T4. T4 cancers typically cannot be removed by surgery, but may be treated by other means like radiation or hormonal ablation. In general, the higher the clinical stage, the more serious the cancer is, and it's important to realize that the rectal exam stage is only an estimate of the actual stage. The actual stage can only be known if the prostate is surgically removed. The pathologist grades the tumor using the Gleason score. This grading system is a little confusing. The Gleason grade is based on how the cancer looks under the microscope. Basically, the pathologist looks for specific patterns of cells and gives them a grade of 1 to 5. Then the pathologist takes the most prevalent grade and adds it to the second most common grade so that it's reported as a Gleason 3 plus 4 equals 7 or a Gleason 4 plus 5 equals 9, for instance. If there's only one pattern, then the pathologist reports it as the same number twice. Gleason 3 plus 3 equals 6, for instance. Theoretically, the Gleason score could be as low as 1 plus 1 equals 2 or as high as a Gleason score 5 plus 5 equals 10. In reality, we very, very rarely see anything less than a Gleason 3 plus 3 equals 6. But we do certainly see Gleason 5 plus 5 equals 10, and that is a very serious tumor. It matters which number comes first, because if the higher number is first, the tumor is more aggressive. For instance, Gleason 4 plus 3 is more aggressive than Gleason 3 plus 4. The pathologist grades each biopsy core as an individual. He or she will also report how many cores were positive and how much of each positive core contained cancer. If there's more than one Gleason score among the positive cores, we use the highest one to estimate risk. Once we have these three factors, the PSA, Gleason score, and clinical stage, we can estimate the risk of potentially life-threatening disease. The National Comprehensive Cancer Network, or NCCN, has determined the following risk groups based on these factors. Very low risk and low risk patients have Gleason 3 plus 3 or less, PSA less than 10, and a clinical stage T2A or less. Intermediate risk patients have Gleason 3 plus 4 or 4 plus 3, a PSA between 10 and 20, or a clinical stage T3 or less exam. Finally, High-risk patients have Gleason score greater than 7, PSA over 20, or a clinical stage T4 exam. 
In certain situations of intermediate risk and almost all high-risk situations, patients will undergo a bone scan and CT scan to determine if there is obvious metastasis to the bones, lymph nodes, and or other organs. This is necessary to help plan the best treatment for that individual patient. Prostate grading and staging are a little confusing. It's not really important to understand all the nuances of the Gleason system or the limitations of PSA testing, but it is important to know which combination of factors you have and what risk group you belong in when considering treatment options.